All right, we're ready to start our last section. I did divide it into two sections. We had an old book, an old edition of this book, and it had this, the first two pages in the last section and the last three pages in another section. So I think when they combine the sections, it's way too long for one lesson. So the first two pages I'm going to call 8.7a and the second two page or the last three pages we're going to call 8.7b and they're two different topics. They're both inverse topics. So the first one solving log equations, the second one solving exponential equations. But like I said, it's just too much information for one section. So that's why the A is there. So the first two pages will be our first section and it will be on solving log equations. So here are the steps for solving log equations. First, we move all the logs on one side and I would put them on the left because you remember back in the day, it was what, section eight, four, when we did loop and swoop and we always wanted the log on the right so we could do, or on the left, so we could do loop and swoop. So that's what I would do that will just save you a step later. So move all your logarithms to the left side of the equation. Okay. Then you write a single log. So this is bringing back what we did in 8.5 log of xy. So remember how the log of a product when we multiply expo or multiply exponential expressions we add the exponents. So a log of a product we add the log. Because remember exponentials and logs are inverse operations. So they share a lot of the same properties. And then, and I'm just going over this because of this direction. It says take all those logs you put on the left and write it as a single log. So we practiced doing this in 8.5 where we went from here back to here. And that's what you're going to be doing today as well on this section. And then we learned that the log of a quotient, so think about exponents. When you divide exponential expressions, you keep the base and sub subtract the exponents. So the log of a quotient turns in to logs subtracted or the difference of logs. And then the last property we learned on 8.5 was the power rule. So remember how that power goes down in front. So in this section, because we're writing as a single log, we're going to be doing all these backwards. Addition, we're going to turn into a single log of multiplication. Subtraction, we're going to turn it into a single log of division. And if there's a number out in front, we're going to put it up as a power. So when we were expanding, we went from this to this, this to this, this to this. But this one wants us to write as a single log, so we're doing all these properties backwards. So I would put them up there on your page so you can look at them later. So all the logs on the left, step one. Step two, using the three properties over here, write your left side using just one log, a single log. Step three, write an exponential form and this is what we called in 8.4 loop and swoop. So this section is kind of a compilation of everything we've done in this chapter. It has logs in it, it has exponentials in it, it has loop and swoop, it has the log properties in it. So you'll see a lot of the stuff you've learned in previous sections you have to know for this section. So we use loop and swoop to write it in exponential form, then we solve the resulting equation because we don't really know how to solve something with a log in it. But once we get the logs away and write it like this, then you go, oh, we'll just make that one over one and set your two cross products equal. So this looks easy. This we don't know how to do. So that's our goal is to change the log into exponential form and then we can solve it. 
So after solving, and here's another quirk about logarithms. So there's three kinds of equations that have to be checked. Uh, the first one we learned about were fractional equations. We called them rational equations. So if there's an x in the denominator, we learn that we have to check to make sure it's a valid solution and it's not undefined. So that was the first type we learned to check. The second type we learned to check was in chapter 6 when we were solving radicals. Any radical equation that had an even index we had to check because it picked up extraneous solutions. Well, the third type of function that has to be checked is the logarithm. So fractional equations, radicals with an even index equations, and log equations. Those are the three that always have to be checked. So we just have to check and make sure that the number we get makes the argument positive. So let's pretend on this example we got x equals 1. Is 2 plus 1 positive? Yeah. Is 1 minus 2 positive? No. So we'd have to throw 1 out if it was a solution. So what if we got 5 as a solution? 2 plus 5? Yep, that's positive. 5 minus 2? Yep, that's positive. So 5 would be valid. So all we have to do is plug it into the arguments and make sure they're positive. Because if you remember back from 8.4, we learned that you can't take the log of a negative. So log of negative 1. Remember, it gave us an error. And we can't take the log of 0. So we learned that the argument of the log has to be positive, otherwise we can't do it, it's undefined. So that's why we have to check and make sure when we plug our answer in, it makes all the arguments positive. Don't have to plug it in here though, because there's no x. So let's see these steps in motion. So step one, get all your logs on the left. So that means I need to subtract log of 5, subtract log of 5. So what I'm going to have on the right side now is 0, right? Because log 5 minus log 5. So I'm going to have log of 2 plus x minus log of x minus 2 minus log of 5 now equals 0. So step 1's done. All my logs are on the left. I don't do this step. It's confusing. I used to do it and students were like, I don't understand why you do that. You don't have to do it. So we can skip right down to here. So this is where our properties come into play. So we learned that when logs have a subtraction, their arguments go down and get multiplied in the denominator. When the log is positive, its argument stays up in the numerator. So this log's positive, so notice its argument's in the numerator. This log's negative, so notice its argument's in the denominator. And that stems from the exponent rules. Remember, exponents with a positive exponent stay. Exponents that have a negative exponent have to move down to make them positive. Sister property for logs. So to do step two, which above says write as a single logarithm. We write the word log once. The log that is positive, we put its argument in the numerator. The two logs that are negative get multiplied in the denominator. So five parentheses x minus two. And this is usually the step right here where students get confused, step three. So they go, okay, I got it as a single log. Now what do I do? Well, what we always do, loop and swoop. Every time you have a log and you need it as an exponential, you do that. And we learned in chapter or in section 8.4 that the common log doesn't need a number. So if you see a log without a base, you know there's an imaginary 10 there. So to do loop and swoop, it'll be 10 to the zeroth equals the argument. So 10, so the base of the log becomes the base of the exponent. Remember, a log is just an exponent, so that becomes the exponent, and we set it equal to the argument. So it's just a basic loop and swoop. It just looks a little more complicated. So 10 
to the zeroth equals the argument, and I just multiplied through there and got 5x minus 10. And then we learned anything to the zeroth is 1. But we also learned in chapter 6, anytime you're solving an equation where one side is a fraction, make the other side a fraction. And then you can solve by setting your cross products equal. So this cross product is 5x minus 10, and I set it equal to this cross product, which is 2 plus x. And then I need all my x's on the left because I'm solving for x. So minus 1x minus 1x, that gives us 4x. Then I need all my constants on the right. So add 10, add 10. So this is gone and this is gone. And I get 5, or excuse me, 4x equals 2 plus 10, 12. And I divide both sides by 4 and I get x equals 3. But remember, you can't be guaranteed that is a solution until you plug it in. So you're just, you don't have to do this whole thing. You just plug it into the arguments. 2 plus 3, is that a positive number? Yes. 3 minus 2, is that a positive number? Yes. So that means 3 is a solution. So what if I would have gotten 2? Let's say this answer was 2. 2 plus 2, that's positive. Is 2 minus 2 positive? No, I don't know how to take the log of 0. Because students always go, well, I don't know when to cross it out. Well, if this was 2 and you plugged it in right there and it gave you 0, that tells us it's a not a valid solution because I cannot take the log of 0 as I just showed you on the calculator. But this one worked, so then you put it in solution sets to show the reader that is a valid solution. So let's try one on our own. It's kind of hard to jump in on one that's already worked. It's a lot easier to start on our own. So maybe we should make a note here that it's a solution because it makes all the arguments positive. That's why we chose it to be a valid solution. So you plug it in everywhere you see an x in the argument. And as long as it makes all the original arguments positive, 2 plus 3, yep, that's positive. 3 minus 2, yep, that's positive. Then you can choose it as a valid solution. OK, let's follow the steps. So keep looking at your box above. So step 1, put all the logs on the left. So I'm not going to keep going up and down. You guys can look up here. So put all the logs on the left. Oh, look at that. They're already all on the left. So we're good there. Step one's done. Step two, write as a single logarithm. So we have to use this property. Subtraction turns into a single log of division. The positive logs argument goes in the numerator. The negative logs argument goes in the denominator. So we're going to use that property for this one. So step two, write as a single log. So log base two, the positive logs argument goes in the numerator. The negative logs argument goes in the denominator. And I kind of like to put busy arguments in parentheses. And then that's equal to four. So step one was put all the logs on the left, already done. Step two, write as a single logarithm. So subtraction goes back into division, as you can see from that second rule above. Step three is loop and swoop. I don't know how to solve an equation with log. I need to turn it into an exponential. So loop and swoop. So 2 to the 4th equals the argument 3x minus 2 over x minus 5. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. And remember, if this side's a fraction, make this side a fraction. So 16 over 1 equals 3x minus 2 over x minus 5. And we'll pick up from there on the next video because we just have 10 seconds left.